Hi everyone, thanks for clicking on my video. I'll start by saying I'm an amateur woodworker, I only started this a few months ago. Never made a video before. To make the task even harder, I've never restored a plane before, which is the project I'm about to do. Hopefully we'll all learn something on the way. See you at the end. So this is the Stanley number no. 4 plane that I picked up. This is literally how I received it delivered in that Tesco carrier bag there. So the first thing I had to do was check all the parts were actually there for when I reassemble it later on. Fortunately they are. Most of the parts are in relatively okay condition. There is a slight bend on the blade towards the top, I don't know if the camera can pick that up. But the worst thing that we've got to repair first is the snap handle. Fortunately they go back together relatively well. So that should just be a glue job. I've not applied too much pressure, just enough to hold it together. But it appears to have sealed quite well at the moment. So we'll let that dry and come back to it tomorrow. So the clamp for the blades in fairly decent condition. I'm not going to use nothing too abrasive on that, just a bit of metal polish. There's a bit of, bit of dirt in here that we just want to clean out. And just get a brush in there. Then onto the metal polish and see how this comes up. The chip break has got a little bit of surface rust that we're going to get rid of. Slight unevenness on the edge here, which hopefully we can start to level that out a bit, but we're just going to work on some sandpaper with that and hopefully bring it back to a better condition. So after I started sanding this, I realized this was a bit more pitted than I first thought. Just took it away, used the low grip sandpaper, take up as much as possible and then came back and finished it with this bit here. Always worth remembering as well, just take some bits of sandpaper and take the bits off the edges. Most people focus on the flat plates, but it's always good and best practice to take off any rust around the edges as well. Just taking this out of the clamp, about to release it. You still see the joint, but I think that was expected, but the alignment's pretty good. With a bit of sanding, they should not be as good as new, but as good as I need it to be. So it's time to take a look at restoring the handles and the grips. I'm going to do this one later on the drill press, um, just because it's rounded so it's easier to keep sanding it all consistently. So I'm going to put that onto the side for now and just focus on this one. I can clearly see it's already been coated a few different times, probably in several different products. So I'm going to use a few different techniques to try and take off as much as I can before I attempt to coat it in something new. I'm going to be using a scalpel to gain some of the tighter areas and take off where the runs are. I'm using an old butter knife to scrape off some of the flakier bits. And then just sandpaper for where the rest needs doing. I'll show you the finished product in a few minutes. So I think I'm pretty much done with sanding this day. I'm really happy with how it's come out. The crack that was there before, you know, it's not invisible, but it's a lot harder to see. So now we can get on to coating it. Now this might not be everyone's desired technique, but what I found is an M6 bolt goes through the middle quite tightly. So I've just put a washer either side with a nut to hold it down in place and I'm just going to fix it into the drill. And this should make it a bit easier to start sanding.
Which needs a little bit more taking off the bottom. Maybe a quick skim round, but it's not far from being done. So what I'm going to do now is take a good, good old bit of the uh, forum favourite, a bit of clear Osmo, and rub the handles down. Now, I know there are better products out there for finishing these handles. I think shellac's probably the most popular one. But the reality is, the thing about it being an amateur is you have to use what's to hand. And this is what I've got at the moment, so this is going on them. Not too bad. Next thing I want to look at is the blade. This is probably in the worst condition out of all the parts. You can see it's quite rusted up this end. I've just run a bit of sandpaper over this just to highlight that there's a bit of a bump in the blade. And the blade itself really isn't in the best of condition. First thing to do is I'm just going to take this little bump out simply by hitting it with a hammer. Next thing I'm going to do is start sanding the rust off the blade. To do this, I'm just literally using a piece of float glass, which is actually a chopping board. I'm going to put some paper over that. And start smoothing it out. So I've gone through a lot of sandpaper to get to this level, but I think I'm pretty happy now. What you will notice is I've switched from the uh, sandpaper sheet that I was using earlier to this material, which is a roll. Much better, much better quality than the, the type of stuff you're gonna get out of cheaper stores. At this point, I think I'm pretty happy with that. There's still a bit of, uh, a bit of pitting, but given what we went through with the chip breaker earlier, I think that was expected. The next step for me is to try and clean up this cutting edge and for that I'm going to place it into my honing guide, do a similar process of running it across the sanding paper to hopefully get this back to a, a usable position before taking it to the sharpening stone. I think we're pretty much done there. You can see the new edge goes all the way up to the edge of the cutting blade. Easiest way to tell that, you can start to feel a slight burr on the back of it. So I think that's ready for the uh, sharpening block now. Next stage after sanding the blade is to take it to the sharpening stone and finish it off and put a nice edge on it. My method is a 1600 water stone finished off on a leather strop. Lots of debates about which is always the best sharpening method but this works for me because water is a lot easier to clean up than oil. So let's put it to the test. I've just finished sharpening what you can see is the primary bevel at 25, followed by the secondary bevel at 30. This has been done both sides on the stone, then on the leather strop. And it's safe to say, sharp enough to take off hairs now. So that's good for cutting. What I'm going to do now is clean up the bottom and sides of the base. What you'll also see me do 
is elevate one side and then the other and this just stops any sharp edges on the plane for when you come to use it. You'll also see that I'll take a file later just to the edge and soften these off which just again stops any marks when you come to use it once it's reassembled. So with those bits being sanded, what I'm going to try and do now is just clean up a bit of this surface rust in here. Not sure of the best method to do that because there is some fiddly part, but I'm just going to try a few different attachments on my Dremel and see how it comes out. So I've tried a few different tools in the Dremel, but I didn't want to be too abrasive, so I've left that alone for now and just resorted to good old WD-40 and rubbing it down with that. It's not got all of the rust off, but it's come up a lot cleaner and a lot more presentable. The various screws and bolts that need cleaning up, there's no point in over complicating these, just use a bit of sandpaper and a bit of wire wool or a wire brush to clean up the threads. There you have it, nice and clean. To clean up the frog assembly all we're going to do is run it across some flat sandpaper on either side of this mechanism here just to make sure that these stay perfectly flat. I'm going to polish up this bit of metal here, flatten off these bits and then just make sure that all this is oiled up so it's easy to use later on. So everything's now ready to be reassembled. Handles have had two coats and been left to dry overnight, they're good to go. We start by assembling the blade base, leave the blade till last. So remember, a bit of oil on all the threads and then give them a wipe down, all the exposed metal a wipe down before you reassemble. When reassembling the blade, always remember to cross the parts over so that nothing catches the blade. Slide it back and then bring it into position. Let's put this to the test. I'm going to try and take a little bit more off. I 
that's pretty impressive for an old plane. That's made a few minor tweaks to level this up. There you are, nice and thin, crispy. And also, Baxter wanted in on the action as well. Wanted a bit of screen time. Baxter. That was my first video for restoring a Stanley number no. four plane. Learned a lot of things on the way. Probably did a few things wrong, but that's the joys of being an amateur. You get to learn. If there's any comments you want to feed back, please leave them below. I'm aware I didn't go into too much detail about setting up the plane correctly. There's more videos out there that can do that better than I can. But until the next time, thank you for watching.